Before we get started, I want to mention the fact that I've had some car problems lately. If you're interested in helping me recover from the cost, then you can check the link in the description and the pinned comment. I would greatly appreciate it. Okay, let's debunk another creepy Jehovah's Witness video. I did part of this video the other day. Jehovah's Witnesses have this video series called JW Broadcasting, and the people in it are straight up weird. They talk to the audience like they're five. I don't know what it is about their inflections, but something is broken in these people. So let's take a look at the JW Broadcasting video and debunk it. Let's get into it. In our theme text, Jehovah urges us to cleanse ourselves of every defilement of flesh and spirit. This involves every aspect of our lives. For example, something we read in the Bible or that we hear at a meeting may warn us that our thoughts need further refinement. Perhaps we detect a tendency toward materialism, or we realize that our precious time is being consumed by social media surfing the internet, or playing video games. For the record, this means exactly what it sounds like it means, thought reform. And what did I tell you? There's something wrong with the inflection. I mentioned this in another one of my videos, but seriously, it's hard to look past. Don't worry, we'll be hearing more of it in a minute. The stuff they listed are standard things you hear old people complain about a lot. I went to vote last primary, and when I showed up, there was a woman there behind the table, and she was talking about how they had a special election and only 30 people showed up. I was like, oh, that's a shame. If I'd known about the special election, I would have shown up. And she said to me, I shit you not. Maybe try getting off Facebook once in a while. I was thinking, first of all, you don't know me. If you did, you'd be complaining about Twitter instead. Second, that's my f***ing job. Old people have a problem with new things. It's been like that for millennia. Like when punctuation was introduced. Cicero complained about it. He said, when you should or shouldn't pause in a sentence, quote, ought to be determined not by a stroke interposed by a copyist, but by the constraint of the rhythm. I'm sorry you don't like the way young people do things, but it's here to stay. And that's just what it is. And Jehovah's Witnesses are clearly fear-mongering and trying to appeal to an older demographic by talking about social media and video games. Besides, you should be knocking on doors anyways, not playing Asteroids or Brick Breaker on the 2600 or whatever it is kids do these days. Let's continue. In Ephesians 4, 23 and 24, we're urged to continue to be made new in our dominant mental attitude and to put on the new personality. So our challenge might be a deeply ingrained negative personality trait. A sister named Christina admitted, I often find myself looking enviously at others. I compare what they have with what I don't have. Well, these are just a few examples. And these may not be our weaknesses, but the lesson is clear. All of us need to keep examining ourselves. Now again, the ideas they're presenting aren't novel. You hear this kind of thing all the time from anybody born before 1944. Don't be envious. First of all, Jehovah's Witnesses take it a step further than most people do. They're trying to modify people's personalities to be something other than their authentic selves. But aside from that, that's literally what our entire economic system is built on. If you don't have envy, then you don't have capitalism. That drives the nail in deeper for Jehovah's Witnesses. In an ideal world, they'd be completely separated, even physically, not just from the economic system, but from the entire non-Jehovah's Witness world. But the vast majority of people listening to this can see why it's ridiculous to tell people that having a market is a bad thing. I'm not even talking about a completely free and unregulated market. I'm not even talking about pure capitalism. I'm saying having any level of capitalism at all is going to include envy. The whole bit Christians feed us about envy and jealousy and all this other stuff kills me. It's a nice sentiment, but those rules were written in a time and place that was very different from this one. The values don't transfer. We've learned so much since then, like how ridiculous some people's ideas were back when those parts of the Bible were written. Let's continue. When we identify a personal weakness, what should we do? For illustration purposes, let's use the example of Christina and her battle with envy. A three-step program to change our dominant mental attitude was published on page 11 of the June 2019 study edition of The Watchtower. 
Well, how about that? They created a three-step program to help people modify their personalities. Let's take an old gander at it, shall we? What method do Jehovah's Witnesses use to modify your personality? Let's see. Okay, looks like their own 12-step program, with only three steps. Step one is prayer. It says, We need to pray as did the psalmist. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and put within me a new spirit, a steadfast one. We must acknowledge the need to change our dominant mental attitude and ask Jehovah for help. That sounds just like step one of the 12-step program, which, by the way, is based on religion, not science. Don't even get me started. Anyways, the first step in the 12-step program is admit that we're powerless and that our lives to become unmanageable. Come to think of it, the Jehovah's Witnesses' first step is a lot like step two of the 12-step program too. We came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Step three, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God. Step four, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Step five, admitted to God, ourselves, and another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Step six, we are entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Step seven, humbly ask him to remove our shortcomings. Couldn't all of these steps be condensed into one? I guess Jehovah's Witnesses did it. So step number one of three in the Jehovah's Witnesses behavior modification course is to pray for God to fix your problems. Step one, she needs to talk to Jehovah. Here's step two of three, meditation. Step two, she needs to meditate. It says, as we peer into God's word each day, we need to take time to meditate or to think deeply on what thoughts and feelings we need to change. Ask yourself, is there a trace of envy or jealousy in my heart? Do I feel a measure of pride because of my background, education, or financial status? Do I look down on others who do not have the same things I have or who are from a different background? Do I feel attracted to what Satan's world offers? Do I feel drawn to immoral entertainment? So basically this would be take a moral inventory of yourself from the 12 step program. Here's the third and final step from Jehovah's Witnesses re-education program. Choosing good association. Step three. She needs to assess her relationships and choose good association. It says, whether we realize it or not, we are strongly influenced by those with whom we associate. At work or in school, we are likely surrounded by those who will not help us to develop godly thinking. However, we can find the best type of association at our Christian meetings. There is where we can be motivated or stirred up to love and find works. Okay, so they're basically telling people to pray to God and admit the thing that they feel is wrong, then take a moral inventory of themselves and find out if any other feelings they have might be wrong, and finally, isolate yourself from society outside of other Jehovah's Witnesses. And that's actually exactly what happened to me when I was a kid. My parents wouldn't let me hang out with anybody outside of the Kingdom Hall, and there weren't many kids my age anyway, so it pretty much led to total social isolation. It's not good, but it's what Jehovah's Witnesses families do. Let's continue. Step one, she needs to talk to Jehovah, admitting that she recognizes the need to change. If she prays regularly for Jehovah to put within her a new spirit, our holy God will help her. Step two, she needs to meditate so as to examine herself in the mirror of God's word. This would help Christina to hate envy. Step three, she needs to assess her relationships and choose good association. Could it be that negative gossip, either in person or online, is shaping her thinking? If so, she'd be wise to choose better association. I find it fascinating that they mentioned gossip in this. Jehovah's Witnesses have such a problem with gossip. There's pretty much nothing else to do but gossip and drink alcohol. And yes, Jehovah's Witnesses can drink alcohol. Mormons are a lot more restricted when it comes to caffeine, alcohol, or anything else. Jehovah's Witnesses are allowed to drink, but they aren't allowed to take it too far, quote unquote. They all do, though. They also tend to take anti-anxiety medicine way too far. I mean, what else is there to do but to drink and gossip about people around you? Can't hang out with people people outside the religion, can't watch movies. Well, you can watch movies, but you can't watch anything that's worth watching. Can't read certain books, can't play certain video games, can't spend too much time on social media. It's a boring life. Sometimes you have to stir the pot to get a little entertainment out of it. And that's my suspicion about why some ex-Jehovah's Witnesses are such drama queens. It's a survival behavior they learned inside the religion, and it stuck with them when they left. Honestly, I feel for these people. I wish I could find some way to help them out of the religion, but it's complicated. It isn't 
like walking into a burning building and dragging people out one at a time. If it were that simple, there wouldn't be any left. They refuse to listen. They refuse to even talk to you if they think you're critical of their religion in any way. They label you an apostate, like me. But every now and then, questions start popping in people's heads. They start to see the corruption in the religion and realize it shouldn't be like that. So I'll keep doing this as long as there's a Jehovah's Witness left in the religion. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. The best way is through Patreon. You can also support me through Teespring. I sell shirts and stickers and all kinds of other stuff on there. I also have a podcast where I say things that I don't feel I can say on my main channel for one reason or another. And finally, I have a store where I sell controller and cartridge stands for every game system from the original Nintendo to the Xbox One. So give that a look too. All links are in the description as always. Okay, thanks for watching guys.